friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Tell them I said hello. Sometimes a customer wants you to wallpaper their switchblade covers. You take the wallpaper and you put it on the switchblade cover. Turn it around and you'll see the perfect outline against which to roll your blade or slide your blade around the opening to get the perfect fit. Now here's the trick. You want to use an extension blade or what's called a retractable blade. <clears throat> and you want to hold the blade on an angle so that you're not shaving off too much paper, but allowing the paper, because you have it on an angle, to exceed the plastic, or you might have glass, switchblade cover. If you cut it against the front of it, you'll be sure to fall short, probably a 64th of an inch, which isn't a big deal if you're dealing with light colored switchblade covers and light covered wallpaper. But in this case, you have to be perfect. Again, you put the wallpaper against the front of the switchblade cover, and then you turn it around and you cut the holes out with the blade on an angle. And so if you cut it on an angle, you're cutting less paper away than you would cut away if you had brought the blade up and done it like that, by cutting it on an angle, you're probably giving yourself another eighth of an inch. And that's what I recommend you do. After you find where the holes are and you've cut them out nicely, you take sandpaper and you make keys, K-E-Y, keys, on the very slick, shiny surface so that your glue or your paste can have something to grip onto. I asked the kids if they wanted a mouthful of this. Doesn't it look delicious? It happens to be what you find at most box stores today. Universal wallpaper and border paste. I wouldn't use this for wallpaper, but it works pretty good for borders because it's something that will stick vinyl on vinyl. And that's why we use it. So, I take the paper and I put a good amount of this onto the back of the wallpaper. And the reason I do that is I'm going to set it aside and let it tack up. I want to saturate the fibers first of all, but then I want to make it get tacky. And then after that, we'll apply the same amount onto the plastic, the, the side against which our wallpaper is going to go. I'm going to put some on there. Because it, the paste is now going into those little grooves we made with the sanding paper and it's going to form a bond. We're gonna go off camera now 
and I'm gonna come back on and show you how I just join the wallpaper against the switchblade cover and how I flap it over and secure the other ends against the back of it. I'll see you on the next one. Okay, I gave it about 15 minutes for the switchblade cover to attach itself to the wallpaper. So now, the only other thing to get this secure is to fold it properly. This is where you can make it very sloppy if you don't do it right. What I've done is I've made four cuts in the wallpaper right at the corners. But if you look close, I didn't do it directly under each corner. I did it 3 sixteenths of an inch away. You see that? On each one, I made my cut away from the corner. Because if I don't, here's what's going to happen. When I fold it over, you're going to see the corner. And so the wallpaper needs not to be cut in order to cover the very edge of the switchblade cover. And so it's now it's like wrapping a present, right? And you don't have to be particularly meticulous at this point when you're dealing with the back of it. I've seen people even put tape on them on the back and they stay for years. When you have this secured to the wall, the wall's gonna hold it in place. All you have to do now is to neatly get the wallpaper flapped over. You wanna have enough wallpaper to flap over. You don't wanna cut just enough because you're eventually gonna see the wallpaper sticking out underneath the switchblade cover or the outlet cover. In this case, it's an outlet. And so we're overlapping the wallpaper, right? And just like we do a double cut when we do our wallpaper, look what I'm going to do. You can see my cover, my corner is completely covered, isn't it? Let me show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make this easy for me. I'm now gonna cut through two layers, okay? So that I can trim the excess off so that it fits nice and snug against the wall. If I don't trim off this excess, I'm gonna have a problem. So, that's my dog. He's going crazy because the lamb is talking. One of the flaps that comes over covers the corner, okay? And when you flap them over, you then double cut so that you can get rid of some of this. I'm gonna get rid of that one. And we're gonna get rid of this one. Can't have all this excess going on. Mm -hmm. 
It looks like there's no rhyme or reason, but trust me, there is. Okay. Now we're ready to tape down all of the sides, and then we'll make our final trim. But don't trim it prematurely because you might expose the corners to the switchblade covers. I'll see you on the next one. This side also has to get scratched up because the, the flap, unless you're going to be taping it, the flap goes over onto the other side and glues to it, just like the front did. What I was talking about before is if you extend the blade out and you cut the holes out of the wallpaper, extending through the hole and cutting it on an angle. You see that? That would afford you of not cutting too much of the paper off. You don't want it right up against the opening. And so you cut it at an angle. See that? This way it covers the white that is on the inner part of the opening. After I get my wallpaper basically in place, with two hands, I start pressing down on the material against the backing. Now this is going to take two hands, although for the video, I'm using one and holding the camera with the other hand. And so I'm gonna press this down. You can use crazy glue on this side or a stronger paste other than the one I'm using. But I think you have the picture. Now, while it's forming and shaping up to be permanent, you can also put this on the wall and then pressing your fingers up against the corners, you can then shape it in the way that you want it to last on the wall. And you can do this simultaneous with securing the back of the of the switchblade cover. I think holding it up against the wall, unless you're using something such as extra tacky wallpaper paste or super glue, uh, you'd have to stay here for several minutes making sure that this sticks to the backing. But you may wanna just use tape and that would secure it just fine. Okay, I'll show you the final on the next frame. Okay, <clears throat> so you can find this glue. I know you're going to resort to other glue anyway. If you use this though on the front, I'm afraid that you're not going to be able to work with it quickly to get this result. So you may have to do it over and over again if you're going to use a stronger paste or a stronger glue. For the backing, I'm using this. And I'm just putting enough just to, you know, this is so strong that I don't want to get it on my finger, but I'm going to. You know how quickly it actually, it has the chemicals of super glue. So you know that that's what it's made up of. The, the better you get this wrapped around, the tighter it's going to be on the front, which is gonna make it look really nice. See how I'm pushing it into the flip side of this, of the uh, cover. You see, I'm pushing it in. Put a little more glue there. And I'm pushing it into here. Because if this part is secure, then of course the rest of it just has to lay down. And of course that's exactly what it's doing. And the super glue will bond all of this excess paper, which I'm not inclined to cut because 
there's a chance you can overcut and I'd rather just leave it there and force it against the wall. You see, I don't want to cut this piece because I'm afraid it's going to show the white switchblade cover. Okay, one more. Mm, there's so much glue left and it's so hard to get out. But once you get it down, boom, it's done. Come on now. Okay. We'll clean up the front. Obviously, you don't want to get super glue on the front of it. Because that will kill the whole appearance of it. It's up to you if you want to use the super glue for the front of it. But there you have it. Now, if you look on the front, remember I spoke about in the beginning of the video to cut that, not from this side, but from this side. And here's why. Do you see how it covers all of the white edges? And, and just to go over it again, we take it and we turn it on its side and we cut it on an angle. This affords me, if I, if I cut it like this, I'm cutting it right up against the edge, but this affords me a greater opportunity to have an overhang, and that's an eighth of an inch. And that's what you need when you're looking at it, because you don't want to see the switchblade cover the inside plastic. Okay, I know it's a long video for a simple thing, but I try to show you how best I do it. I'm not crazy about doing this, but when the customer wants it, what else can you do? Show me how you do it. Tell me what you do when you have to do switchblade covers or vent covers. They're a little more intricate, and I have a project like that coming up in Clearwater. Thanks for watching this video. See you on the next one. The next one.